watching the Young Female Entrepreneurs live stream that happens every Thursday here at ovalai.tv slash live at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern. And tonight we are honored to have Melody Berenger on the show. She is the founder of The Crave Company, which started here in Seattle, but has spread internationally. They're out in Amsterdam, up in Canada, um, through the East Coast. They're just everywhere. So most likely if you're watching this video, you have a Crave near you. Melody, though, in starting Crave, founded 20 plus businesses along with it and wrote a book about it called Craving Success, which was the YFE Book Club's first book we read. It was a fantastic book to kick off because there was a lot of um, a lot of life lessons in the book that we were able to discuss and really um, learn from as we're building our own businesses today. So anyway, we're going to welcome her on in just a few minutes. But before we get started, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what's coming up with um, Young Female Entrepreneurs. We had a YFE LA meetup that was put on by Erin of Well in LA. I have a picture of it in there if you can pull it up. Um, we just wrote about it, or Erin just wrote about it on the blog. So if you go to youngfemaleentrepreneurs.com, Com, you can find out a little bit more about it. That is one of the in real life events um, that's happening. But Young Female Entrepreneurs is all about connecting entrepreneurial women in their 20s and 30s online through events like this, through Twitter chats, and through online meetings. And um, all of this is possible because of Ovali.com. It's a company I'm an owner of. Um, it's a women-owned family business that does web hosting and cloud services for small businesses. So I just want to thank Ovali. We're using the Ovali TV studio, the network, and um, all of the hosting services to make YFE possible. So check us out at Ovali.com. Now, um, one other little tidbit. In uh, the beginning of June, I think it's June, oh gosh, I don't want to say anything. It's the first Monday of June um, is our YFE Twitter chat that's on a Friday night at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 Eastern, and it's like our fun Friday night in. If you're a young female entrepreneur, um, stay in and tweet with us. I know all of you do. It's not just me. Um, so anyway, that's a fun event that's coming up, and I'm sure there'll be many more to talk about next Thursday at the live stream when we welcome on Joey Bra. It's two girls that are in the Foster School of Business out here at UW, my, the school I graduated from. Um, I didn't actually go to the business school, but they did, and they created a bra that you can put your iPhone in the side and wear a strapless bra dress and not have to bring a purse or anything like that when you go out. So I'm very excited to talk to them. They did a Kickstarter program and have gotten a tremendous amount of press around their products. So it'll be a really fun live stream next week at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern. So <laughs> I feel like I talked really fast. Um, before I welcome in our book moderators, Morgan and Jessica, Morgan Hatton, Jessica Newell, they're the ones that came up with all those awesome questions for you guys. They got the discussion started over on our Facebook group. And Morgan actually had the idea for the book club, and she did a fantastic job with putting it together for all of you. Um, I'm going to introduce them in just a second because they're going to be asking Melody all of the questions um, for the evening. And I'm going to pull in things from the live chat. So this is really important. One of the pluses of showing up live is that you get to ask our guests questions and also promote your business a little bit. Uh, so I'm on the live stream right now. Now, so if you have questions, make sure you chat them out, and I'll try and interrupt Morgan and Hatton and <laughs> Morgan and Jessica where I can um, to get your question asked. So, without further ado, let's introduce our moderators, and then I'll introduce Melody in just a minute. So, welcome on to the show, Jessica. Since you have Jessica up there, oh, you can see everybody. Let me go ahead and change this a little bit. So, Jessica, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself quickly? I live um, in New Jersey, and I'm in the process of starting up a digital media company to focus on getting the performing arts onto digital media online, and that's what I'm starting at, and I um, have been to the Crave Chats in New York that have recently started up in the fall, so I was really excited um, to read this book, and Going. Well, <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for being on the show tonight with us, Jessica. So Morgan, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you got involved with the book club? Uh -oh. Morgan, I think we lost your sound. Morgan's having some <laughs> technical difficulties tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and give her a second to try and readjust and see if we can get her sound back up.
Morgan will come right back to you. I'm going to go ahead and do the intro for Melody, and then um, you can go ahead and keep talking. Okay, sure. Oh, okay. there we go. Yay! Your sound came on. Okay. <laughs> why don't you go ahead and give yourself a quick introduction and tell us why you got involved with the book club. I'm so sorry because I just did a mess. But um, I'm a freelance graphic designer out of D.C. Um, I loved Melody's book really because it talked a lot about um, – real life and, and she calls it the gritty details of um, daily things that go on in, in businesses for women and so I felt like unlike the biz, some a lot of the business books that all of us read um, it, it really it felt like I could put myself in Melody's place I could understand exactly what was going on and so you know and I think YFE is doing such a great job with um, providing this book club for all of us because we all want to read a lot of stuff um, and it provides a great structure for us to come together and discuss important things. And, and just so that you guys know, it was Jessica's idea to do the book club. <laughs> I, I just kind of piggyback off of her. Um, so, um, but it, it's great and have had so much fun interacting with you guys talking about Melody's book. Awesome. Well, yeah, and just so that if anyone that is watching this evening, we are on Google Hangout. Um, so <laughs> thank you to Google, and thank you to all the women that knew how to use Google Hangout. That was awesome. Um, Morgan and Jessica, I cannot thank you enough for doing the book club. You both did a fantastic job in running it and bringing the discussion started. So I want to introduce Melody, who's the author. Again, if you're just tuning in now, we're bringing Melody Berenger on uh, Young Female Entrepreneurs Live to talk about her book, Craving Success. And I think I have an image of it up here. Melody is a founder. Actually, let me go ahead and read her quick bio. Melody ba Behringer is an unabashed, oh gosh, I hope I pronounced that right, <laughs> startup junkie. She's built over 20 companies that range from Behringer Farm, a family-run specialty food business, to a home furnishing store, to a fitness studio, and she documents it in her book, Craving Success. Her current entrepreneurial love child is the Crave Company, connecting women business owners with the people and resources they need to boost their businesses. Melody, thank you so much for being on the show tonight. Maybe tell us a little bit more about um, who you are. Wow. Yeah, I am definitely a startup junkie. And um, I don't know. I mean, uh, I, I love the shiny objects. And I'm, I'm the... <laughs> What's you know? What's new today? What what can I do? I get bored too fast. Um, but that's a good thing. I, I'm going to embrace this and say this is a good thing now. Uh, but yeah, I I have like you said to over 20 businesses over a 30 year span, and I've made a lot of mistakes, learned a lot of things, and I'm really trying. I'm actually rereading my book right now because. Um, I'm kind of going through some of the same issues, and I'm like, okay, I don't want to make these same mistakes again, so I'm going to reread my book to remind myself of um, some decisions to be made. So, Very cool. Will... Well, thank you so much for being on the show, Melody. I just, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn over the, the hosting reins to Jessica, who I think has the first question up. Yes, so Melody... Thanks again for being part of this too. Um, it's so exciting and I was so excited when Jen said that you were going to get to interview you. Um, so the first question I have is, um, oh, hold on, um, how did you see yourself transform personally as you transitioned from your earlier business to the Crave Company? Um, you talked in your book about all the different stages you went through and how did that affect you as a person? Um, so I'm a different person today, obviously, than I was, um, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, we always are, but I think that making so many mistakes and trying so many things and just kind of throwing things up on the wall and see if, seeing if it sticks, uh, doing that so many times, um, has led me to where I am today. Um, I'm trying to really embrace that right now because I used to think, um, Maybe it was kind of like a, the word junkie really is a problem. And, um, but I'm trying to embrace the fact that it's okay. It's okay to keep having new ideas and keep going after your dreams. And if one thing doesn't work, um, I think my biggest lesson I've been learn, learning this last year is to live 24 hours at a time. And I, I've never done that. You know, I've always said I'm going to do it. We always say that. Um, I think the terrible um, 
if somebody close to us dies in our life and we go to a funeral and we, we're all around death, we think, oh my goodness, we have to live every moment. And um, unless you're experiencing that a lot, which hopefully we are not, um, I don't think we actually live that way. So I think I am really trying to live in the moment. Like, today I even said I'm going to change my, my uh, philosophy to uh, 24 hours at a time. I'm going to live 12 hours at a time because <laughs> I had a, like a little mini crisis this morning that I knew that in 12 hours it was going to be fixed. Um, but in the last year, I, I've been having a, these complete ups and downs and just knowing that today I'm in, a, in kind of a drama craziness, tomorrow it's going to just be all okay. So I think if that, I don't know if that take, if that's an age thing. It takes time to learn these things, to, to just be okay with the fact that, okay, we don't need to have a five-year plan. I used to think I had to have that five-year plan. I used to be so, I'd go to the accountability, have all the accountability meetings, have the New Year's Eve, you know, on New Year's Eve, we have all of our friends over and create the resolutions and let's do, be accountable. And I pretty much gave all of that up in the last year. And so the new me, the question that you asked, is a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more, it's going to be okay. Cool. Very cool. <laughs> so, so yeah. Jessica, do you have the next question for Melody? Yeah. Um, so, oh, hold on. Sorry. Um, so the next question um, is, now you're in. Now that you're in major cities all over the world, um, what's your goal? And I'm coming from you know being very close to a, a major city. Um, well, how do you see your company reaching more uh, marketplaces that have more of a global perspective than like a local fo focus with Crave Company? Yeah, that's a good question. I've been spending the last six months working on that. Uh, so far, we've had a, a physical book. And we've had it in almost 30 cities. And what I'm finding now is I don't even know if we're going to be reading physical books. It's funny that we're talking about a book club, right? <laughs> um, you guys, I don't know. Did you read my book on, on an e-digital e book? Um, I actually got uh, paper, the paperback. And we lost Melody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she'll join back, hopefully, in just a second. Um, Morgan, how did you read Melody's book? I, I did it on the Kindle. <laughs> That's funny. I have both the um, the Kindle on the iPad and then um, the paperback book for her. Let me go ahead. Yeah, and... I enjoyed reading it on the Kindle. I was able to actually bookmark stuff and then search my bookmarks afterward. Um, you know, it was my actually the first book I had read um, on the Kindle. And so I, I thought it was um, interesting. I thought I'd always be a person that read paperback. Um, but the um, functionality of it was a lot of fun. Awesome. So uh, we lost Melody for just a second, and so it looks like she's joining us back in the Hangout. So we'll go ahead and take off from where we left off. <laughs> Yay, she's back. Did you guys freeze too, or was it just me? It was just you. I'm <laughs> <laughs> away asking you questions, and then you're all like, woo. <laughs> Anyway, I was asking you if you uh, read my book in a physical format or was it the e-version? I actually purchased the physical one because I wanted to look at the pictures and everything. Okay. Um, and so Morgan said, she, yeah. I, I uh, read the Kindle. On the Kindle? Yeah. Did you see the pictures? Yeah, my book, I, I, I made it all in full color and put pictures throughout the whole thing because that's the only thing I knew how to do because we produced the Crave books and those are all full color. So if I, when I wrote my own book, I'm like, well, might as well just do that. I, I don't know if I would do that again, but that's what I did. Now I'm, I'm thrown off, sorry, because we were, um, yeah, everybody froze and I forgot the question now, even though I was answering it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the question was, um, how do you see the um, the, digital. the focus going from a global, right. from local to global, basically? So Crave is all about local, but we're we're very global. So um, I like to go into a city like Chicago or New York or Washington D.C. and say Crave D.C. 
and focus on the very much of a micro local women owned businesses in DC or Chicago and but yet we because we're in so many cities uh, we are working on blending all of that and, and introducing women from all over all, all of our different networks because you know we're, we're all the same everywhere we're all um, having the same struggles we're all um, out there doing you know working out of our house or coffee bars or a little office and have a few employees and I just really want to get everybody together and, and collaborate so we're working on a good way to to do that and you know by doing that is you know getting more techie going more online we just created an online directory for Crave so we don't have we have a couple thousand members but we um, don't have them all in our directory yet we're working on that we probably have about five or six cities loaded up so far and in the next month we'll have all of them on there and that'll help create a whole global Crave instead of right now the only way to see everybody is to have a, a physical book you know in 20 cities so that doesn't seem like a very well, it's funny that you say that because when I, I was looking for the Crave books because I have a few of them and I've actually gone on to Amazon and bought Crave <laughs> books from different cities because when you go on travels, you're able to, I could find all the businesses that way. I, it's kind of funny. Yeah. Now you go on my homepage and it'll see the directory and you can uh, uh, nice. check out the different cities and, and see that online. Very nice. All right, go ahead and take it over, Jessica. My, you know, to answer your question, I'm spending all my time figuring out how to to become more global and to um, connect people, you know, and online instead of through the the physical books. You know, we're not giving up our physical books. It's just that um, we can reach so many more people online. So we're we're spending all our time working on that. Cool, very cool. Um, so for the next question, um, and I thought of this because of um, you had recently over well in the winter you had a crave chat on collaboration versus competition and um, I was wondering why do you feel that young women especially um, get caught up in competition when they're starting up professionally and um, how do you suggest for YFEs young female entrepreneurs to um, overcome the comp competitive spirit and become more collaborative? That's a really good question, Jessica. I'm getting very deep here. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it was good, okay. but um, we lost Melody again. Okay. Hopefully she'll pop back up. Uh, we're on Google Hangout tonight, and uh, <laughs> there we go. Here she comes back. So Jessica's going to ask the question one more time to Melody. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay, I don't know. I'm just sitting here. <laughs> My internet connection doesn't seem to be really strong. I thought it was. So sorry. It's okay. <laughs> so um, the next question I asked was, um, why do you feel that young women um, get caught up in competition um, when they're starting off professionally and what do you suggest on especially two young female entrepreneurs on how to overcome this and be more collaborative? I, I, <laughs> I know that's really deep. <laughs> I don't know how to answer the question of I, I did not um, ever work for the man or or, or was have it ever been in a situation where I have been in a competitive role with other women um, I've only been in a collaborative role from day one, so I, I have a hard time answering that question. All I can say is if you could just focus on collaboration because there's so many things. If you can get the whole competitive, I mean, we all have the competitive thing in us, right? But um, you can get so much more farther and it'd be, it's so much more fun to live life and collaborating with people. So um, I, I, I just, I reach out to people all the time that are doing similar things or things that we could help each other with. Maybe we have the same same market, but we're not exactly doing, nobody's doing exactly the same thing. I mean, it might look like that, but everybody is, is, is has little tweaks and differences about them. So the faster you can learn that, the better, I just think. Um, I, I've, I've led a lot of groups of women where we put the same, you know, like two um, stylists in the same room and at first they don't want to talk to each other because they think they're going to be sharing like secrets and it's a very competitive <laughs> thing. And then by the end, if, if, because we're women and we're good at, um, you know, relationships and getting to know each other. So 
by the end of our, our sessions, usually they're, they're collaborating and doing business together. So I don't know. I just think going into things with a collabor collaborative mindset, uh, you got to just get over it. We got to, you got to watch that movie misrepresentation. Yes. Yes. Because I mean that we're, we're all, we all kind of do it. We, you know, we're our own, we all you know, are, are not so great with each other. We, even you know, like watching women on TV, the comments we make, things that we do to other, we don't even realize that we're doing it. So I think just having, bringing awareness um, by watching something like that and talking about it um, just makes you think the next time you're going to make a comment or not be very nice. I think, I just think just bringing awareness to it is a good thing. Yeah, cool. Um, the follow-up question I had for that is like, why do you think this is so important? And maybe um, you can say how how do you see Crave as meeting that need of of providing that environment for women? Um, is that one of the main goals? Oh. <laughs> we dropped Melody again. <laughs> uh, she, she'll pop back in. I'm sure. I just wanted since. We, are, we have this pause. Why don't we go ahead and remind everyone that if you're watching live tonight, it is Thursday, May 24th at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern, if you're watching this later on. And I am on chat, so if you have questions for Melody, um, I'm more than happy to relay them over to um, to her. And actually, there's a question from Jules uh, of Smack Lab. So we'll talk, to Ju we'll talk about Jules' question in just a moment. So go ahead and take it over, Jessica. Okay. Um, so I guess... Did you hear what I what I had asked the question? What do you guys talk about while I'm while I'm gone? <laughs> we talk about you, no. <laughs> Are we back to the question of the collab the collaboration? Yeah. What do you see? How do you see Crave me helping women work through that? Yes, I I feel like that's what that's what we that's what we spend all of our time doing is just getting like minded women together, very similar to what you guys are doing, and just having conversations and talking and getting to know each other. Um, I'm a, the Crave is all about bringing that together. A lot of people are shy or they don't feel like, you know, the, the bad networking word, nobody likes to network. Um, if you can just think of it more as creating relationships and, and we think of it all the time as just how can we um, help our community know each other to create stronger relationships. So that's all. Oh, no. <laughs> well, let me take this opportunity. <laughs> Melody <laughs> dropped again. Sorry, guys. Uh, thank you so much for your patience. If you're watching live or watching this video, I might edit out some of these parts. <laughs> Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and take the opportunity to say that Jessica and Morgan are going to be announcing um, the next book club this evening. So hang tight till the end to find out about what we're doing with that. You're back. Here we are. <laughs> they talk really fast. <laughs> I don't know. So sorry. It's okay. Okay. Did you hear what I said last time? Yes. Okay. I think. <laughs> Hopefully we got all of it. <laughs> and let me actually um, break in really fast here because Jules has a similar question as to what Jessica is asking here in that, is there a good way to break the ice with a competitor to move toward collaboration? And this is from Jules of Smack Lab. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I think that you know that I, I'm actually dealing with this a little bit right now of how do how do I approach a competitor and kind of try to figure out how to collaborate with them rather than like I don't want to talk to them. So I'm um, don't have the best answer, but I think that if you could figure out what your how you could help each other um, versus the competition, like what are what are the holes that each each one of you could provide for each other. Um, and maybe, maybe you're not going to be able to work together. That doesn't mean, am I still moving? Are you guys still moving? Yeah. <laughs> I just, you're good. I just fear that I'm talking. <laughs> um, you know, I, it, you don't always have to, you know, to get to be friends with your competitors and it's, it's not something 
you have to spend your time doing. But if you feel like that's what you want to do, then um, there's no reason why you just can't say, let's go to coffee and talk. We're in the same world together and let's, uh, let's share with each other what's going on and maybe we can help each other. Just get started on talking. Very nice. So hopefully that, Jules, hopefully that answered your question. Um, go ahead, Jessica. Sorry. Uh, and again, I am on the live chat. So if you have a question for Melody as uh, before we wrap up, definitely make sure that we head on over to the chat and ask it. I'll make sure to relay it over to them. Okay. So the last question um, I have is, um, do you have a larger vision of what Crave will accomplish and I say beyond 2012, <laughs> after the world ends. Um, what's your vision of where the next stage of Crave is going? You know, remember I said a little earlier that I only live 24 hours at a time. So um, <laughs> yes, I can't really talk to you about a five-year plan because it doesn't exist. Uh, as long as I'm having fun, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And I've, I've, I used to think I want to be in 100 cities, and I don't know if I want to do that anymore. So always reinventing it, just always tweaking it, looking at where we <laughs> uh, So we're living in the moment now, and Melody left again. <laughs> but she'll be back in a second, I'm sure. Uh, so... Morgan, did you have more questions for Melody? Yeah, I mean, I have a couple, you know, for when she comes back. Um, I think, you know, I, there are a lot of things in the book that I definitely wanted to ask her about, so I, I'm excited. Um, yeah, I hope I hope Crave will come to D.C. <sighs> She's joining the Hangout again. Here she comes. So, Morgan, maybe you could go ahead and ask her a couple questions then. Oh, sure, sure. Melody, are you there? Almost. Hmm. Got an icon image up of her. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh that's kind of a weird Living angle. in the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I could dance for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah oh cool 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 okay so um we do other shows here at ovalight.tv and we've got the i want to draw a cat for you guy from shark tank in a couple weeks really, really fun That's exciting. yeah pretty excited cool. about that okay she's back this is really exciting we're living in the moment <laughs> we're living in the moment <laughs> yeah okay go ahead morgan hey melody so um Lots of things really, really um, caused epiphanies for me as I was reading the book. Um, one thing you were talking about, oh, she left us again. Are you no, there? I'm here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, one thing you were talking about, you were putting together a health expo, um, and you were trying to recruit different people to come and work with you. And some people you pulled from within your network, and then some people um, you cold called and said, hey, will you come and, you know, participate in this with me, and you had success in both areas. Um, we asked the book club this question, and I thought it would be a fun question to ask you. Um, with as popular as social media is now, do you feel like cold calling is completely irrelevant now? Do you still use it? Mm -hmm. I, you know, is it is it the old way to do things, or do you think it's still valuable? Yeah, I can't remember cold, the last time I cold called. Um, but good point. That's a really good question. Um, I uh, think... If I was, if I'm to go after anybody and talk to anybody new, I start out with Twitter or Facebook or, um, hmm, you know, there is, there are, there are some great people that are not on social media, so we have to um, get to them in a different way. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I have been, I've, I have called people um, that are not on social media. Um, it's been it's more challenging because it's just so so not what we do anymore. Yeah. It's like, oh, we have to actually call and figure out what their phone number is and call them and make an appointment and they have like a paper calendar. Um, <laughs> so 
Yeah, I think it's pretty old school now, but I'm just talking it out loud here. Well, yeah. cool. Well, cool. Are there, is there anything as you're, because you mentioned that you're rereading the book, is there anything that you feel like you would have stuck in there or something you'd amend or that you'd st want to share with people now? I, I think that I'm going to continue at, to add chapters and a couple, besides the uh, living 24 hours at a time and really just knowing everything's going to be okay the next day, um, I would say that you should only work with people that you love. And there's a lot of controversy about this subject. Um, when when you're when you are working on a team somewhere sometimes you don't get to pick your team and so you're supposed to just you know like oh here I am I have to love everybody on this team I'm gonna be working with them every day um, so that's unfortunate if you can't pick your own team so but when you're picking your, your team and you're picking people that you work with I just think that you should really want to go out to dinner with them um, and like them on a per personal level and um, are, are you, am I still here? Yes. Uh, so my big, that's my big thing that I would, I'm thinking about writing another chapter about working with people that you love. Um, because if, if you don't want to see somebody in your inbox on a daily basis, um, I always say that could probably give you cancer. So um, I've been learning that lesson the hard way in the last couple of years. And um, I just think it's really important, the people that you're around. Am I still here? Are you guys still there? Okay, you got to keep moving your head. <laughs> <laughs> Morgan's because not moving. Yeah, Morgan, are you still on with us? <laughs> I don't think so. Well, we'll pop back over. Jessica, did you have any other questions for Melody? Um, are you going to be in New York? <laughs> Anytime <laughs> soon? <laughs> I I will. I go. I go to New York just about once. A <laughs> That's just a personal thing, so. <laughs> and to stay away in the summers. Yes. So, uh, Melody, I have a question for you, actually. So, I got to go to this fabulous event that Crave put on. Uh, that was interviewing Alexandra, and I. She has two last names or two names after that. You'll have to fill me in on that. Alexander, we'll just call her Alexandra from Guilt. Okay, Alexandra from Guilt. Uh, Guilt.com, I believe, is the URL. She authored by invitation only. So Melody got to host her on Monday, I want to say it was. And she got this intimate uh, interview thing going on. And uh, what did you take away from speaking with someone that has a business that's valued at over a billion dollars, that did all of this in a number of five years? What did you take away from speaking with her? Right. Um, I love the part where she talked about having to go fast and raise money to beat out the competition. I thought that was really interesting. Um, I don't, I have not raised money for my business and I've been thinking about it lately. So um, just to be able to go faster, I, I'm feeling a little bit um, tired of being scrappy. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I believe in being scrappy, but uh, Getting a little tired of it. So it was really fun to hang out with her because even though she thinks she's scrappy, I think it's pretty funny that she thinks she's scrappy, um, you know, having a thousand employees. Um, I, I love that, that, you, that she, they were able, they're still able to maintain a startup, uh, just a mentality, um, even though that they are pretty big. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of my takeaway from her is you can you can get really big but still have a scrappy mentality but also it really helps to raise some money and get some talent in your life yeah she's got yeah. a lot of, she's got a lot of talent around her and that's really impressive well and i thought that was a point um and morgan's joining now so she can ask you one more question but i did take that away in hiring and hiring the right people and making sure that they were just as passionate about your business kind of like what you were talking about um, so no, I, I have to say that was seriously fun being able to listen, um, to her speak and Crave has put on a few other coffee chats that I've really enjoyed too. Um, dry soda for any of you that have ever been pregnant, dry soda is probably someone that you absolutely adore. Uh, but I got to hear from her at a coffee chat and she's also said she was scrappy yet. She's raised millions and millions of dollars from an angel investor. So I thought that was fun. So Morgan's back on. Let's go ahead and get one more question for Morgan in. You're on, Morgan. Can you hear us? I can. I'm really sorry. But yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> Welcome to the 
Um, so am I still on for one more question? Yep, one more question. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Um, so another part in the book that you mentioned that you said a lot about not recruiting people that you have to train or not recruiting people that um, aren't experienced in what you need them to do. Um, do you find that's true? How do you balance it if you need an intern? What, what's the kind of fine line with that? It does help with uh, starting out with somebody. I, you know, common sense is really what I really care about. Um, not everybody has common sense. Uh, so it's a really valuable thing. So if somebody just has common sense, um, that's what I look for first. And and I love people that just can think on their own. So I am so not a, I don't like to manage people and think for somebody else. So even though I can uh, inspire people and train people, I would rather um, just kind of say, here's the end result. Let's go for it. You get it. You know, everybody gets from A to Z a different way. And I don't want to micromanage somebody my way. So, um, yeah, I like. I definitely like people to already kind of know something going in. But, I, but, but I think you can learn anything if you have common sense. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. good. And curiosity is a big one too. I love curiosity. So, do you do you keep interns? Do you use interns or? We do. Um, they leave <laughs> for very <various laughs> reasons. <laughs> Um, everybody start. Everybody starts out an internship with full gusto, and then things happen in their lives. So that's my biggest um, takeaway with working with interns: is you really have no idea if you're if they're going to stay for two days or two weeks or two months. Um, but uh, every single person that's on my staff right now is has come from an in internship to start with. So every once in a while, somebody sticks, and it's really exciting. Very cool. Um, if you don't mind, are there any productivity tools that you're using that you absolutely love? Like, is there a mobile app you have that's your favorite or a project management tool that you think is, you know, way more awesome than anything else? And I look at my iPhone. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't really use a project management tool myself. Um, just Google Calendar. You know, I, I, I'm on Google for everything. Um, is this a Google ad? You know, we use uh, we use Google Hangouts to ch to work with our team. We also um, use Google Docs for everything uh, mm -hmm. to share because that's how we're that's how we work with everybody. Um, it's not the most effective thing for like I'm thinking about it. I'm looking at a Salesforce right now um, to help. Have you guys ever had an experience with that? <laughs> I need, I need, I need help on on that because our Google Doc, or just using Google Docs is just like using an Excel document, and it's not very effective for sales. So we're we're working on a new something something for that. But um, yeah, I don't know what else I use. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of what I use that that helps me. I use Evernote. Okay. I mean, that's kind of where I keep all my notes and my thoughts. And I'm a big mind mapper. So when I have a new idea, um, I use um, Maptini. Okay. That's a good one for the iPad and iPhone. Um, but I've been mind mapping forever by hand and now, now on an app. I, that's how I do a brain dump and get ideas out. And I also like when I've been speaking lately, I would, I mind map what I'm going to talk about it and just bring it up with me on my iPad and just kind of talk that way. That's how I interviewed Alexandra the other day. I just put all the mm -hmm. questions on my iPad on Evernote and just asked her that way. Very smart. Well, our time is winding down and I wanted to let everyone know that if you're on the live chat, if you have one additional question really fast one, I'd be happy to relay it over it. But I'm going to go ahead and thank Melody so, so much. Thank you so much for being on the show this evening. Everyone in the YFE book club loved your book and took away a lot of great insights from you into how to build a business as a young woman. So thank you so much for that. Um, for Melody, why don't you tell us really fast where we can find you after the live stream? Uh, thecravecompany.com. Got to remember the thecravecompany.com. I am also at startupjunkie.com is my blog, and um, my just my name Melody Berenger on Twitter. Very nice. 
And now, um, I have to say, one of the things that impresses me most about Melody is how giving she is, um, which I don't know if she wants me to advertise that, but <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, there's so many young women, especially in the Seattle area, that Melody has really, I don't know if you would agree, Melody, but um, I look at it as I see them around you, and you've kind of fostered them or brought them into the whole entrepreneurial world. And I know, in a sense, you've kind of done that for me when I graduated from college is when I got into the Crave Company. I went to, I think, your shop symposium was one of the first business things I went to. Um, so it's been kind of fun to watch how you've really been giving of yourself and of your knowledge, and especially with this book. So thank you again for coming on the show. Um, I wanted to thank our moderators too, Jessica and Morgan. Um, Jessica, right here, Jessica Newell, and then Morgan Hatton. Morgan, if you can say hey. Hi. Hi. Your papa. <laughs> um, you can go over to books.yfe.me and we're going to talk a little bit more about the club on that side, on that site. <laughs> Sorry, Jessica. Why don't you tell us what our next book is for the club? Um, so what, and actually um, I'll just introduce it, but Morgan was the one that chose it. So I'll let her share why she chose this book. But the book is called Making Ideas Happen and it's written by Scott Belsky. I think that's his name. Um, and he is creator of 99% and not the 99%, but uh, uh, 99%.com and um, Behance, which um, focuses on um, making ideas happen, going from creative to creative idea to action and making the idea happen. So um, let me. Why, why doesn't Morgan share why she chose this book? Um, yeah, no, it's 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 awesome. I think um, I've always been a follower of what Behance was doing as a graphic designer. They're really involved in the creative community, um, especially the visual creative community. Um, and they have a really fun productivity tool or task management tool called the Action Method, um, where it comes in you know web form and phone and iPad form. Um, they let you color code a lot of stuff, and I, I'm really kind of a nerd about, you know, stuff like that. Um, and so from that, um, I heard about the book. Um, I started listening to it a little bit, you know, in the audio version. And I think um, I think for all of us, if anything we could do, we would um, figure out a way to work um, more efficiently so we can better balance our kind of um, our work-life circumstances. Um, and so I think um, I think it'll be a lot of fun. I really do. It, it's going to be, you know, a, a bit of a change in terms of um, the way things are written from Melody's book. But I think I think it'll be I think it'll be a good time. Awesome. And Jessica, when is it kicking off? Do you remember? June eleventh. <laughs> June 11th. 11th. Yes, so we've got a couple weeks break. We're going to switch over to the books.yfe.me site, so you can still go there and find out more about Melody's book. Um, But thank you again to the moderators and to Melody for this evening. It was a lot of fun. Thank you so much if you're watching live. Otherwise, you can find us over at youngfemaleentrepreneurs.com to watch it after this or at ovali.tv. And I promise I'll put it up on iTunes at some point. Um, And when I do, it'll be a big, fun celebration. So anyway... Um, Hope everyone has a great week. I'll see you back here next Thursday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern for Joey Bra. Talking lingerie. It's going to be super fun. Bye.